Uh, let's talk climate and climate issues. Cape Town is home to some of the best beaches in the world. I know KZN is going to start yelling, but arguably some of the best beaches in the world, each with a different kind of personality and their own distinctive attractions. But climate change uh, is certainly threatening Bloberstrand Beach. It's a favorite amongst locals and, of course, tourists, so beautiful places for photos as well. Uh, it stands to lose more than 100 meters of its sandy shoreline by the end of the century. Now, I know we're talking, you know, many, many, many decades away, but we're going to start feeling the impact now. Uh, Dr. Peter Johnston uh, is a climate scientist at UCT, uh, University of Cape Town, making time this morning. Dr. Johnston, good morning. Now, I appreciate your time. Good morning, and I just, and this is always the problem that I think many people have when we talk about climate change. It's so far down the road, it's almost difficult to imagine why it's significant right now. Help me understand. Well, it, it, the impacts of climate change are being felt worldwide. Um, there are many, many cases where people will say that this, that they are feeling the impacts of climate change and that the certain conditions, whether they're extreme events like droughts or floods or very, very high temperatures, these are an impact of climate change already. Um, but obviously what we want to do is project where these changes will go to in the future. And that's where projections kind of lead to these headline statements. Um, and many of them are alarmist um, to get people's attention, and we understand that. I mean, Bloberg Strand losing its beach, you know, it's a major deal. But because it's so far off, we've got to interrogate the possibility of the uncertainty and of when it's going to happen and how it's going to happen. So we take these um, headlines with a pinch of salt, but the, the science is there and the scientists are investigating what's going to happen and making predictions based on models on how things will be changing in the future. And climate change is certainly a big driver of what we can expect in many, many parts of the ecosystem in the future. Uh, help me understand sort of the, the ecosystem that we're talking about here. When we talk about a beach losing 100 meters of its sandy shoreline, I mean, are we talking about 100 meters back towards land from the breakers? Is that what we're talking about, just so I understand? Well, there, there are two parts to, to, to the threat on beaches. Firstly, beaches are naturally eroding and depositing. So, for example, Bloberg Strand is on the northern coast, on the Atlantic. And the sand on Blobig Beach is dynamic. And originally what used to happen in, in very old days before human settlement, um, a massive human settlement in the Western Cape, is the southeaster would blow sand from False Bay, for example, over the Cape Flats and deposit it around uh, Newtuk, uh, not Newtuk, sorry, Blobig Strand, and all the beaches on the, on the Atlantic coast. And this would be a natural process. So sand would be eroded and then it would be deposited. Uh, and this would happen mostly from the southeast to the northwest. So once um, the sort of Cape Flats were settled and vegetation was grown there, this natural um, process uh, was, was disrupted. Now, when they say 100 meters of beach could be lost, I'm not exactly sure where they got those figures, but there are two things that can happen. Because of erosion on the beach, the beach itself could actually disappear. So the sandy bits that you see, um, when you come out of the sea, those could be blown north or south and disappear and not be replenished. Oh. So in that case, some rock could be exposed and the natural sandy beach could be diminished. But sea level rise, where the actual ocean level increases, um, because of the slope of the, of the shore, let's just say it's 1 in 50, if the sea level rises by 10 centimeters, that's going to extend 500 meters inland. Wow. So there's... The, this is this is the dynamic that we're facing because of the slope, mm. a small increase in sea level will lead to quite a far inland breach of water. And, and I suppose this is the problem with it being also surface. very unique as well, isn't it? It's unique to every single uh, kind of beach. I didn't mean to interrupt, Doctor. I just want to ask you this before I uh, mm -hmm. say goodbye to you. Is there anything we can do to change this and stop this happening with you know, by the end of the century? Something tangible we can take away from this and try and help? Well, stopping climate change is a massive issue, and, and there we have to look at our personal response and also the way governments are treating their commitments to reducing emissions. I mean, that's the most serious thing. Uh, putting a stop to climate change is almost uh, highly unlikely if we continue using fossil fuels and behave in the way we are doing. When it comes to management of coastal areas, there certainly are things we can do. Um, we've got to try and prevent that erosion off the beach, and we've also got to try and build buffers so that if the sea level does rise, that um, infrastructure isn't damaged and destroyed. So ultimately, the luxury of having a nice white beach is not the most important thing, though I imagine for tourism it is important, and there are ways of protecting that beach through um, interventions of infrastructure. But 
the bigger the bigger point is this is this, this is another canary in the coal mine warning us that you know if we don't do something then much of our lifestyle is going to be affected and and, and beaches are a many minor one there are many other things like flooding droughts food security and water security so it really is another an alarm bell and we're headlining the fact that it's a beach because it's a major tourist attraction brings a lot of, of currency into the country but there are many, many issues regarding climate change that we need to be aware of, and this erosion of beaches and sea level rise is certainly one. If the, uh, you know, if the sea level rises, it is rising because of thermal expansion, the globe is getting warmer, the water is expanding and it's rising. But once um, the ice in Greenland and Antarctic um, melts at a more rapid rate, which we're fully expecting, we're looking at catastrophic sea level rise. Um, you know, at the moment, we're saying up to a meter by the end of the century. And even that is a large degree of uncertainty. So we give a range between 10 to 50 to 100 centimeters by the end of the century, depending on our scenario. Yeah, it's going but to be in the future. You, you can imagine just what a, an extra meter uh, in height will actually do to coastal homes and coastal regions uh, as well. If we're just talking about one beach now, Doctor, and you're quite right, we're referring uh, to this issue because I think it's more visceral uh, for most people to understand. But the devastating effects down the road, uh, we need to stay on top of. Uh, we will do that. Dr. Peter Johnston, thank you very much uh, for your time this morning. University of Cape Town uh, joining us, climate scientist uh, at UCT. Very, very worrying. We get a real sense of what could uh, look like with damage uh, in a few decades from now.